definitions of elevation is a point's vertical distance above or below some surface of reference. That could be the first floor elevation of uh, a multi-story building on architectural plans. It could be mean sea level. Whether that's a s flat surface or some other shape surface, we can uh, use that surface of reference uh, as the basis of measuring elevation. We often call that surface of reference a datum. And the most common datum that most are aware of is mean sea level, that average height of the surface of the sea for all stages of the tide over a 19 year period at 26 tide stations scattered along the Pacific Coast, the Atlantic Coast, and the Gulf Coast. This is an older type of datum that is um, obviously very important to what we do, but our North American vertical datum of 1988 is not so dependent on this as it is on uh, a gravimetric model we call the geoid. We'll explain the geoid in greater detail in the next several days. A level surface is actually not a flat surface, it is a curved surface, and a line along that is a curved line. In fact, a level line is normal at all points to a plumb line. All points along its length, a level line is normal to or perpendicular to a plumb line. A plumb line is simply uh, visualized with a string supporting a plumb bob or a pointed weight and that string its orientation is parallel to the gravity vector. Leveling is our process of determining the elevation of a point or the difference in elevation between points. And we do that with a series of leveling measurements we call a level circuit. We use them to determine the elevation of one or more points. A backsight is one of those leveling measurements, one of the series. In fact, a backsight is a rod reading that we take on a point of known elevation. Conversely, a foresight is a rod reading on a point of unknown elevation. We use these at least in pairs for for every backsight, we typically have at least one foresight. We do a lot of our leveling work with optical instruments such as is shown in this picture. And this type of level, often called an optical level or an automatic level, has a telescope for sighting which is combined with a leveling device for maintaining that line of sight in a horizontal position. Further, this particular type of level can includes what we have called a automatic compensator. The te your text refers to the, c the technology of an automatic compensator and I encourage you to dig into that a little deeper to ensure that you understand it. A height of instrument is the elevation of the level crosshair or the line of sight in your instrument. As you spy through the telescope you'll see a vertical and a horizontal crosshair and everywhere you turn the instrument when it is leveled up that uh, horizontal crosshair sweeps through a horizontal plane and that horizontal plane is one that, to which we give an elevation that is the height of instrument or the HI from that elevation from that reference elevation we can calculate elevations of unknown points a turning point is one one of those points we use temporarily to transfer an elevation forward in a circuit. If if you can only see 300 feet and, and still read the rod for any particular measurement and you need to run a series of measurements that covers a horizontal distance of a mile, well then you need to establish intermediate points uh, for transferring the elevation of your instrument crosshair forward along that one mile circuit. So we call those temporary points 
turning points. A benchmark, you have heard this term before, it is a relatively permanent object with a marked point of known elevation. Not all points of known elevation are benchmarks, but a benchmark is designed to be a permanent object that we can come back to time and time and time again and rely on its elevation as being fixed and stable. Here are some examples of benchmarks. This is a benchmark here on the Parkland College campus. You may be able to under, read the, the stampings on that aluminum disc that says Parkland College Survey Marker. We have several of these that are uh, buried uh, flush with the ground. They're 12 inch diameter concrete monuments and they extend four feet deep to put the bottom of each monument below the frost line. This ensures that they are stable from year to year and don't change elevation due to frost heave. These particular brass tablets are set in concrete or uh, rock strata at various places in the western United States. These specifically, if you can read them, were set by the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey in the 20th century. This stainless steel rod has a dome top which ensures that anytime you set a flat bottom level rod on it you can only get one distinct contact point and thus a consistent elevation reading. The mechanical pencil in the lower left shows you the relative size of this particular marker that is driven in a rather massive outcropping of undisturbed rock. Here is another uh, stainless steel rod uh, drilled into rock as well. The tip of it is painted orange and the elevation of this particular benchmark has been spray painted on the side of the rock ledge. This chiseled square has been cut with a cold chisel and hammer in the corner of a deep retaining wall here on the Parkland College campus. This roughly two inch by two inch chiseled square has had uh, measurements taken on it so that we know the elevation of the concrete surface inside that square. Here's another chiseled square that has been cut on top of a concrete light pole base foundation here again on the Parkland campus. Often we in professional practice will use uh, fire hydrants for benchmarks. We want to use some portion of the fire hydrant that we are confident is not going to move readily. The operator nut, the big one that you see here, uh, is loose and it does move. Whereas the small cap nut is tightened permanently and thus it does not move. In this particular style of fire hydrant you can see there are multiple cap bolts but the uppermost bolt is the operator bolt which is not suitable for use as a benchmark. There are different types of level circuits and one that you will run soon is a benchmark circuit. That's a level circuit performed to establish the elevations of new benchmarks. When you start a new engineering project, your survey crew may need to create a new benchmark or two on or near your project for not only design survey purposes but also for construction layout purposes. When we run this type of circuit there is typically one backside and one foresight measured at each instrument setup. Here is a profile view and a plan view of a hypothetical benchmark circuit. On the profile view on the top you can see that we start at benchmark 32, 352 and then use two turning points to move us forward to measurements onto benchmark 358A which in this case is our unknown point and then we uh, through turning point 3 run our circuit back to our starting point benchmark 352. Uh, the plan view indicates that the route we take uh, going out to benchmark 358A and coming back don't have to necessarily be the same. Every setup where you see the instrument symbols 
shows a back sight and a foresight. Thus, every, every reading here has a potential impact on the final computed elevation of benchmark 352. 352 has its known elevation, but our series, our circuit of measurements may yield a different computed elevation. Every backside and every foresight in the circuit is, as we say, on the loop and has a direct impact on the closure error in the circuit. A profile circuit, by contrast, is a level circuit performed to measure multiple foresights per setup. We use uh, this type of circuit in a lot of mapping and construction surveys. The majority of such level circuits are of this type. So for every back site and every setup, we can have multiple foresights, and every one of those foresights per setup is measured from the same HI. For instance, I want you to consider a circuit that has three setups in it going from benchmark 100 to benchmark 200. Those are not elevations, those are just benchmark numbers, names. And in this case we see an instrument that has taken a back sight on benchmark 100 with a reading of 7.17 and our turning point is on the right side of the screen here with a reading of 3.02. The other readings are taken perhaps on the ground along the center line of some, say, street center line. Well, those, are, those readings are not a part of the loop. We call them side shots. That is, they are not checked by any other reading. They are simply independent from the loop. You could say even addition to what you might consider a basic benchmark loop. So just as in the previous slide we had one backside and, and four foresights, here we have one backside on turning point one to establish the HI of the instrument and then four foresights. One of those four foresights is the foresight onto the turning point. The other three foresights are side shots on this uh, profile circuit. And then in our third setup, one back sight on the turning point two, followed by three foresights, two of which are side shots, and the final shot is a foresight closing onto benchmark 200. Not only do we have the distinction between benchmark circuits and, and uh, profile circuits, but we also have loop and connecting circuits. So if you start a, a bench or a level circuit, and end it in the same place, we'd call it a loop circuit. You start at some no known elevation and, and measure other locations to make unknown elevations known, and starting and ending in the same place. A connecting circuit allows you to use multiple benchmarks. And a, a common scenario for this would be establishing new benchmarks on a highway project. Let's say your highway project is two miles long and there are established benchmarks at each end. Well, if your task is to establish new benchmarks every half mile in that two mile project, then you could start at one end on a known elevation, uh, measure your uh, unknown elevations at your new benchmark locations, and continue on to the far end of the project, closing your circuit on a known on another known benchmark. The advantage this gives you is the, um, the numeric strength of having worked with multiple benchmarks and you also prove in when everything works well uh, that those two known benchmarks still agree with each other.